I can't believe I'm saying this, but for the coming months, we have new content on its way, although the delivery feels a bit off. Let's discuss. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, we actually have a May and June content roadmap now, which is a good sign. Jagex has heard for many years now that we, the players, want bigger and better seasonal events, and that's something I can absolutely agree with. I can confidently say that Jagex has used that feedback to create some fantastic events, namely the latest Christmas and Easter event. I mean, these events had it all. They had a unique area, a brand new quest, activities, rewards, old school rewards, and there was that sense of community while at the event. But at the same time, what we've been saying, what I've been saying in my videos, is that this isn't permanent content. So... Jagex says, there's a balance to strike in achieving this. It's clear that you want to see more of our development invested in permanent content, especially in the near term or short term, rather than content with a limited seasonal availability. And yes, that's true. Their response to all of this is to stop development on the summer event and refocus those resources into new permanent content releases. This is, I mean... How many developers are left on this game, dude? <laughs> How? Okay, this is... Okay, probably these events are taking so many resources that they're not able to also work on permanent content on the side. But that's absurd. I, I Let me get this straight. This bit of communication right here and them adjusting course is a good sign. This is very positive, but my question just is, is it really too much to ask for to have both solid events and permanent content? Let's read on for a second. Okay, so the developers working on this new summer event, which is temporary content, are being placed onto game jam projects they've picked based on how popular they are. Reason being is that the summer event is taking up too many resources and they're simply going to focus on getting us some permanent content being too exciting game jam projects. I'm actually not appalled by this. I mean, I would rather have a lesser temporary event and have more permanent content in the game, personally. So what I'm saying here is that I'm really happy to see this post. Although at the same time, something in me is like, why are game jam projects being used as like the water to put out the flame kind of thing? Like... What else is being worked on behind the scenes? I mean, this, you know, these projects were kind of like a proof of concept already. And only now they're being brought into development. But what about like the non-game jam project? What is it really saying about the game that, you know, passion projects, things that start out as passion projects are the only or most of the permanent content coming into the game? I, something about that just doesn't seem right. I'm not saying this is a bad thing per se, but I'm just pointing out that that is kind of odd. So what can you expect? Well, May will be getting a brand new boss, and I wouldn't expect too much about it, and it's a Rex Matriarch, but it is a new boss. It's going to be a necromancy-based one, and unfortunately, it doesn't seem like we're getting any new information about it just yet, as we're seeing the exact same image we've seen before. If you've been following my channel or any other form of news, you'll know that this Game Jam project isn't anything new, but us getting a release date and it actually being quite soon is new. In May, we'll also be seeing the graphical update to Relica, which does look really good. And I'm going to say it again, one RuneScape is better than multiple different styles in the same game. For those of you that don't have the best eyesight, the high contrast mode will also be releasing in May, which does seem to be quite useful. And on the 17th, Double XP Live will be returning to the game. In June, we'll be getting a very exciting pick as a Game Jam project, being Daemonheim Archaeology, which I'm really looking forward to. I mean, just look at this concept art. Looks fantastic. And I'm curious to see what kind of items or relics will come out of it. For those of you wondering about that summer event, that of course isn't coming, but the classic beach event is returning to the game, so players are going to line up and jump into the Dungeoneering Hall and sit there all day long. At the end of the post, Jagex does mention hearing us loud and clear about us wanting to hear about content beyond June very soon, so I'm hoping they can make it happen for once, but I wouldn't bet anything on it, given Jagex's track record. And I really hope I'm wrong, guys. I really do. Now, something that wasn't mentioned in this post is something coming next week on April the 22nd, and that's something you've already heard about if you're following this channel, the new quest, Requiem for a Dragon. 
This quest is the Fort for Infrey series finale and requires the Tomes of the Warlock and Killy's Row quest. It will also require level 86 Archaeology, level 66 Magic, 75 Necromancy, 54 Construction, and level 10 Slayer. In this quest, you're going to return to Ungyal to uncover Vorkas creation and you're going to be setting up an ancient Ungyal ritual site which will be usable after completing the quest. Now, the quest is going to feature some combat and perhaps even a quest boss as well. Yes. Balancing a quest boss is a nightmare, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't really want to comment on what happens in this quest for that, on that, that sphere. Yeah. Um, in terms of quest difficulty overall, um, middle. <laughs> well, I mean, the rewards for completing this quest are actually really interesting because you're getting a new ritual site where your components last longer and disturbances will linger for longer, meaning you'll have more time to click or react to them. Basically, like a a lower effort ritual site. Kind of weird, but um, yeah, that's what's happening here. The only downside to training here with the catch is that you're not able to gain any souls for your Will of Souls upgrades while using this ritual site. Now, thankfully, there's more rewards, and the one you want is Zorgov's Ring, or more specifically, the upgraded Zorgov Soul Ring, which you can get by empowering it with energy, which you get from that new ritual site. This ring will give you a passive called Soul Spring that has a 5% chance to generate a single residual soul with each hit. So that means you're going to be blasting your target a lot more often with the Volley of Souls ability, which is quite a powerful passive buff. Nice. Also, if you were wondering about that fourth conjure in the skill guide, well, that's not going to be part of this quest, unfortunately. Mods do mention them wanting to add it, but it's not coming anytime soon. According to Modum, the reason it is not a reward part of this quest is because the fourth conjure would have required too much balancing work in the time left until the quest release. Really cool. But it's still an option in the future. Just yes. not, yes. not for this quest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There, there was a really it was a really cool idea, but like I think just trying to lean into what, what was said earlier of like we want to make sure it's using the resources we have, keeping it focused. So I think piling on top being like, let's add a fourth conjure and try and balance it and do all, you know, it's a lot more, there's a lot extra stuff. It would have made the producers cry again and again. We don't want yeah. to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so we have some content to look forward to this month, May and June, and I'm glad we do because it was feeling barren out there. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.